Hey church, I've been reading in the book of 2 Kings, uh, specifically recently, the story of King Josiah. And if you know the story of Josiah, you know that he became king of Judah at a very young age. King Amon was before him, and to put it short and sweet, Amon was a bad dude. He dishonored the Lord, he did a lot of things that were disobedient. And so King Josiah, uh, when he becomes king, he decides he wants to follow God. And so he decides that in order to make the ways of God known for the people of Israel, he has to make some changes in the country uh, in Jerusalem. And so he decides to make room for God. He decides to make space for God. He looks at the temple. He decides to repair it. He decides to clear out all the other gods that weren't uh, part of their worship of Yahweh, the true God. He decides to take away all the other priests and people that were in the temple that were not worshiping Yahweh, the true God. He decides to pull out the scripture and have it publicly read. And he decides that they haven't been following. He notices what's in scripture and he realizes they haven't been following what God has said. Here's just the description of how Josiah's reign begins. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adiah and Bozgath, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father, and he did not turn aside to the right or to the left. And so as he began to make all these reforms and he leads the people in corporate worship of God and they make a covenant together to pursue God, to pursue Yahweh, their true God, Josiah is showing us what it means to make room for God. You'll notice it says he doesn't get distracted with beliefs here over the right or on the left. Josiah is keeping his eyes fixed on the true God. And so what I've been reading into when I look at this passage and remembering in my own life is asking the question, am I making room for God? Am I noticing that there are things in my life that try to compete for my love for God? Are there things that I need to either minimize or be less liberal in terms of how I'm spending my time? Are there resources that I'm using that are competing with my allegiance for God and his kingdom and, and my giving towards his, his kingdom work? Church, there's always areas that we're going to be looking at in our lives that we say, God, you can take more of this. We can give lavishly with our time, our resources, our energy. But at the end of the day, we know that that doesn't earn our love. That doesn't earn God's love. In reality, it's a reflection of our love for God because he loved us first so that we can love him with our time and our resources. So my encouragement to you this week is, are you turning to God? Are you making space for God? Are you turning to the right or to the left? Or you're keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, who loves you so dearly. Church, be encouraged, because even when we stray, even when we can't fix our eyes solely on him, his grace carries us, his grace saves us, and he loves us, even in the midst of our straying, so that when we are able to be corrected, when we are able to keep our eyes fixed on him, he's there waiting for us. So church, that's my encouragement to you. Make space for God because he is there waiting for you.